Hey guys, it's Emily Rose, Desert Rose in Bloom, and the Lord put something on my heart to share with you guys. I want to talk to you today about doorways of pain. Um, starting off the new year, um, I, I typically do a fast, and I'm um, the Lord provided a, a, a vacant house for me to come alone and fast and pray and seek His face for the year, and also to... Um, to work on the prophetic words for 2017 to everybody that requested. I am working through those. Um, I take it seriously. I don't just go boom, boom, boom through them and just say anything. I seek the Lord for each person. So sometimes I only get like six or eight done a day because I'm also working on some writing and, and doing some spiritual warfare and, um, you know, seeking the Lord for my own life for this year. So I am definitely working on those. Appreciate your patience. I want to let you know that everybody who like responds to the email, I, I got to move them up on the list. Um, and, but I am going to work through everybody. And and I, am, okay. So that aside, um, it's interesting. This place where the Lord has brought me for this fast is a place that I used to rent that happens to be vacant right now. This is where I lived with raising my son. Um, essentially, a year after I got saved, we lived here like 10 years, or maybe about two, three years after I got saved, we lived here for about 10 years. And so a lot of my emotional healing <laughs> happened in this room. This is my old bedroom. There's a mattress, and then there's some bookshelves, because it's, it's a family home, and uh, some other family members had been living here before. And so I have like this bookshelf over here with lots of books that I worked through, and inner healing, and, and just things that I learned. But so here I am again here, and the Lord was wanting to, me to share with you guys about doorways of pain. Okay, if you have been hurt, as most of us have, if you didn't have a perfect childhood where your parents completely understood you and loved you unconditionally and just taught you about who you are in Christ, you know, you have... Um, you, you probably came to the Lord with some rejection wounds. Now, if you've been abused on top of that, it's going to be even worse. Or if you've had, you know, abandonment in a marriage or, you know, there's all kinds of things that can happen in life. Um, poverty can really give you, you know, wounds and, and a lack of mindset. And so there's all these roots that we come to the Lord with that are things that we are rooted in things abuse and rejection and um, shame and guilt, you know, the sin that we come to the Lord with when we first come to him. And God wants to root those things up because if you are constantly dealing with the fruit of these things, uh, fear and anxiety and um, outburst of anger, and if you're, un uh, you know, you reject other people before they can reject you or everywhere you go, you feel like people are rejecting you. Um, the Lord wants to heal you, and he wants you to get rooted and grounded in love, and his love, and his acceptance. He wants you to understand who you are in him, um, because when we know who we are, what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about the Lord, it has everything to do with how we experience life. You could have millions of dollars, a husband that adores you. You know, everything that people think that they need to be happy in this world, you could have all of it. But if you haven't been healed of these roots and, you know, you're still going to produce bad fruit in your life and you're not going to be able to walk in the love and the joy and the peace and the patience and the kindness and the goodness and the gentleness and the faithfulness and the self-control, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is not going to be there if you're not rooted and grounded in Christ. So I just want to say, I want to give you some uh, some very practical things that you can do to get healing, okay? If you're hurting, if you're depressed, if you're dealing with addictions and things like that, because addiction is the fruit of bad root, um, you could pick at the fruit, you could pick at the fruit, you could, you know, try in your own strength to get free from things, and it's still going to keep coming up if you don't let the Lord heal you. So you need to allow your pain is there for a reason. Something's wrong if you're hurting. And the Lord wants you to take the pain to him and he wants to heal it. God is our healer. That's one of his names. And so one of the things that you can practically do is spend time in the presence of God. 
you know, do all the spiritual disciplines, go to church, read the word, get books out, um, you know, buy books about the specific things that you're dealing with and, you know, seek book, books out and read. Reading is such an essential tool of a Christian life and listening to sermons, um, and fellowship and with other believers, all these things will help you grow. But personally, to get those roots dug up and to get the healing that you need, Jesus is the only one who can really do that for you. And people can assist and books can assist. But um, get along with the Lord, put on worship music, and lay down in his presence and soak in the presence of God. Just worship the Lord. The word says we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So worship the Lord, you know, just worship the Lord and worship the Lord. And then, you know, if you need to turn the music off, if that is a distraction, once you've kind of got into a place of worship with the Lord and you're open to God, invite him to come in. Say, Jesus, you know, walk me through this. Come and help me with this Holy Spirit. God, I need you. God, I need you. And then let him walk you through their doorways of pain, okay? You've got to go back through them. You came through something and it hurt you. you got to walk back through those doorways of pain with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus and apply the blood of Jesus to these painful life situations and these wounds and, um, and he'll heal you. And it, it's going to happen in levels. It depends on how bad the hurt is and how deep and how far back it went. But if you continue to come before the Lord and worship and praise and, and allow him to, you know, some people, their mind is all over the place. The Bible says to take every thought captive. So, you know, depending on where you are in the Lord, we're all in different levels of glory. We all are at different places of understanding our identity in Christ. And we're all in different areas of how much healing we have. But we all need to continually do this and cleanse, you know, allow God to cleanse us of this pain. And our pain needs to be productive. Because you do know there's pain that gets you nowhere. Um, there's the pain of the consequences of sin. <laughs> that's going to hurt. And, and that's not very productive pain unless it leads you to repentance and then you know that pain can be productive and and making you holy as you repent and ask the Lord to help you out of that but these pains of things that have happened that are beyond our control or or even the things that were in our control things we were involved in that hurt us uh, the Lord wants to heal us he wants us to come to him with our pain so get in the presence of God imagine the altar in the holy of holies Take you, whatever you need to do to imagine, you know, the cross. Take your pain to the cross. Jesus standing there. You know, I, I imagine the Lord standing there with me. And a lot of times he'll put his hand on my forehead. Um, you know, as I'm envisioning God there with me, like somebody laying hands on some, you know, person. Jesus lays his hands on me and I, you know, I just receive from him. I believe what you believe about yourself, what you believe about what God's giving you, that's what's going to create the change. And so, do you believe God wants to heal you? I mean, do you believe that? Do you believe that God is able to heal you? Because I know you might be walking around wounded for years and, and everything is just hurts you even more. Everything that comes out, you can handle life so much better if you're, if you're starting from a place of wholeness. Then when something comes against you, you can, comes against you, you can get with the Lord you know, and take the time that you need to receive the healing for that. But if you're coming from a, just a deeply wounded place, all the stuff from your past hasn't been dealt with. You're coming into new relationships with baggage and you're just so wounded that you can't interact with people without getting hurt constantly. Um, God wants to set you free from that, okay? And he will, and he will heal you, and it can happen in levels, or he might just touch you. I mean, this is not something you can get in a prayer line. You need to go to the Lord for yourself and receive, um, you know, people can assist you in that. I, I actually offer prophetic counseling. Um, it's not for inner healing, although some of that takes place, but... Um, you know, it's okay to get counseling, whether it's professional, I'm not a professional, I'm, I, you know, the Holy Spirit has anointed me, and I, you know, he's, he's called and chosen me as one of his counselors, so, you know, I do prophetic counseling, if you're interested in that, you can contact me about it, but, um, this is something you can do on your own, so just 
whatever feelings come up, feel them, but feel them knowing that the Lord is with you. Feel them knowing that the Lord loves you and that he wants to heal you. Take them with him. Hand them to him. Say, I can't do this. If it's a person, you know, hand the person to him. If it's a, if it's a pain or a sin, you know, receive, hand him the sin, receive the forgiveness. If it's somebody else's sin, you know, make a conscious effort to forgive that person and say, Lord, I can't do this alone. Change my feelings. Heal my feelings. Heal me deep in my heart, God. Help me to know who I am. Lord, show me your face. I want to see you as you really are. All these misconceptions that I might have about you, that things that you could possibly want anything for me, but healing and health and, and provision and, and love and, and joy and peace and all the things that Christ says he died for us to have. Um, God wants us to have those things and walking around wounded, consistently wounded and not receiving healing isn't productive. So if you're going to hurt anyway, you may as well take the pain and say, I'm going to get healing and go to the Lord with it. Enter into his presence with thanksgiving, enter into his courts with praise and say, God, I don't understand all this. I don't see how all this is working for my good, but I'm trusting you that you will work all of this out for my good. God is a God of justice. Give him the pain. Give him the hurt. Give him the injustices and trust that he's going to give you the healing. He's going to give you the hope. He's going to give you the faith. He's going, he's going to turn your ashes into beauty. He gives you beauty for ashes, the garment of praise for your former shame. God doesn't want you to walk around apologizing for yourself. God doesn't want you to walk around feeling less than and like you don't measure up. God doesn't want you to um, feel like you have to beg him to help you. <laughs> you know, don't, it's, you know, yes, be persistent in prayer. Be persistent in prayer. God honors that because he wants a relationship with us. So he loves it when we come to him and say, you know, but he wants you to pray through to a place of faith. So you're not just say, please, Lord, I need, I need money for this bill. I need money for this bill. It's like, God, you know what my needs are. I'm trusting you. Is there anything that I need to do that I'm not doing? Is there a place that I need to give that I'm not giving? Let me say real quick, there are so many people who one of the things that they're asking about for 2017 is their finances and their finances that are, are in a mess, but so few people, um, you know, and I don't know where, uh, People could be donating and tithers, but, but typically a lot of these people aren't tithing. They're not giving, they're not giving into the ministries that feed them. And then, you know, God, you have to obey God to receive from him. You know, that is part of it. You can receive eternal life. You can receive a salvation by your faith and you receive the good things of the Lord by faith, but also, you know, faith without works is dead. So if you're believing God to bring you into a level of prosperity, but yet you, you know, you won't give them $10 out of the hundred that you just got, or even five or three, you know, you might put some coins in the offering plate. Um, you know, you can't just expect the Lord to prosper that because that's not operating in spiritual principles. And also let me just go on and add that to the inner healing. You can't just you know, walk around hurt and wounded and say, why is God not healing me? If you're not taking steps towards that healing, you know, getting with the Lord. I, I believe that every Christian should fast. And I know there's lots of reasons and excuses that people make why they don't. But you could do a Daniel fast if you can't truly have a health reason where you can't not eat food, which typically isn't the case. Usually that's an excuse but there are a few people who might not seriously medically be able to go without food. You can do a Daniel fast. You can fast. Um, fasting is food, y'all. I know it's a lot. A lot of Christian circles say, "I fast TV or to." Yeah, that's a given. You know, when you're fasting, you don't do those things, but you're seeking the Lord. But fasting is so important to your healing. When an animal is wounded, they don't eat. <laughs> if you are walking around wounded and and just you know eaten. Eating, 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 thinking that's going to, it might d numb the pain. You know, take some time and fast. Fast and pray through. Hurt, it hurts. Oh, the stomach, you know. Um, you know, I typically do a really long fast at, on January. I, I I once fasted 40 days. I'm not bragging. I'm saying it's, it's. I, I probably will never do that again. My hair was falling out because I didn't, you know, eat for 40 days. But, um, you know, a 21-day fast or a week fast or if you've never fasted before, 
24 hours, dinner at 6 o'clock or breakfast at 6 in the morning. Don't eat until breakfast again the next day and spend that extra time in prayer and work your way up. I, I believe fasting is a crucial and central part of a successful, powerful Christian life. And so is giving because the Bible clearly says, you know, where your um, treasure is there, your heart will be also. If you do not trust God enough, to say, I can't afford to give. I can't afford to, you know, sow back into the ministries that are sowing into me. You don't trust God. <laughs> it's just, it's not just a matter of giving. It's a matter of your lack of faith. And, you know, and the Bible does say faith faith without works is dead. Giving is another thing that's essential to, to moving forward in the Lord. But that's not what this is about so much. Although that came up, so some people must need to hear it. Um... I just encourage you to get alone with the Lord and allow him to take you into those wounded places. You know, you might think it's your husband hurting you and he might be hurting you or your kids might be hurting you. Your friend might have hurt you. But when you get alone with God and you walk through that healing with him, he might bring up a memory of your stepdad who um, rejected you and the kids at school in elementary who didn't think you were good enough. And, and, you know, the guy in junior high who made fun of you in front of his friends or whatever it is. You know, we get wounded. People are mean. You know, wounded people hurt people uh, or hurting people hurt people. However you want to say it, you know, uh, we're fallen and only God loves perfectly and, and perfect love cast out fear. So if we're still walking in fear, we're not perfected in love and, it, and God wants to perfect us and he wants to. And, and I just encourage you to take the time alone. You know, laying in bed depressed all day, that's not the same thing that I'm talking about. Although there might be a, a time where you need an hour, or two, three, maybe a whole day in bed with the Lord. But let it be productive. Don't let it be full of self-pity. You know, oh, this person did this to me. You have to decide, are you a victim? Are you going to be victorious? No matter what you've been through, you can decide how you look at that. And if you're going into inner healing, I'm this victim. You know, all this has happened to me. You know, you're not coming into it with a, an attitude of victory. And you have the victory in Christ. God is saying, everything, I will cause everything to work together for your good if you love me and you're called according to my purpose. So, when you come from that standpoint, you're, you're no longer a victim and you can't come into uh, the healing process with a victim mentality. You know, it's just not going to work. You won't receive your healing. You have to say, I'm more than a conqueror and I'm going to, I'm going to come up above this. I'm going to rise above this. And I mean, even, even if you're, you know, I, I've been raped. I've, you know, I've been left. I was nearly killed while I was pregnant by my son's father. I mean, he was so abusive and, um, you know, I've been through all kinds of stuff and at some point, you know, you have to decide are you going to be a victor or are you going to be a victim? And and those things, if you allow yourself to continue to feel victimized, that's how you're going to feel about it. And you're going to feel bad about yourself because that's not your identity in Christ. You are more than a conqueror through him who loved you. You know, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lived in you. Was Christ a victim? It was his attitude about it. It was his, I, nobody takes anything from me. I laid down my life, you know, like the, the places in your life that are out of your control and somebody else hurts you, if you say, hey, I'm living for the Lord, I'm not living for myself. So if somebody comes along and hurts me, you know, it, it's a, it's part of the suffering of Christ. It's not just about you. It's, you know, whatever it is for you to continue forward in love and to love, love your neighbor. If somebody's hurt you, let me encourage you. Pray for them. That's part of your healing. You pray for those who hurt you. Bless those who wrongfully accuse you. These are scriptures, you know, get in the word and, and hear what the Lord has to say about it. That's for your healing too. And, you know, God's going to bless them, but it's not going to be, uh, you know, just it, when you're blessing them, maybe it's blessing them with the knowledge of the truth. If you are not responding from a place of wound to people you're in relationship with and you are loving them and you're able to come from a place of healing, God can use you to bring healing to them. And you can come rise up out of that situation. But, you know, you got to use wisdom. I'm not saying stay in an abusive relationship where you're, you know, getting beat up or anything. Um, but, so that's that's the word of the Lord that I have for you today. And God bless you. If you're waiting for a prophetic word, I'm working through them. 
Um, I appreciate um, the the few people that have given. I, I appreciate that. Um, I'm doing this full time now, and it's enabling me to move forward. It encourages my faith when I hear back. Um, get the feedback. I've had wonderful feedback. I'm so excited about that. People's, you know, are are just wonderful feedback saying their lives are being, you know, encouraged and it, it's confirmation. There's some feedback. December 13th, I have a post. If you're seeing this for the first time and you want to get on the list, go to the December 13th post and read some of the feedback and, and message me um, what it says on December 13th post and I'll, I'll put you on the list. And also prophetic counseling. I'm, I, I really need to get a website up. I'm, I'm working on uh, getting a book out of prophetic words, but, um, I do offer prophetic counseling. You can message me about that and it's, it's over the phone. And I, I've also gotten a lot of wonderful feedback from people that are being helped from that. You can comment on this if you're one of the people. Um, so I love you guys.